Chapter 341, A Bell Visits It was unexpected for Tang Xiao that Han Xingguo would get excited over such a little thing. But still, he nodded and said, I'm friends with him. When I went to Tianjin City before I met him there and hang out together a bit. Just because you you know him a little you think you can ask for a leave? Vice Dean Lu is an old school person to my knowledge, someone very difficult to speak to. An incredulous expression hung on Han Qingwu's face. She evidently knew a little about Lu Bai. Moreover, she shouldn't be on good terms with him. You're also familiar with him? Asked Tang Xiao. I'd rather not. My transfer to Shanghai University was very smooth originally. But he, actually, said Han Qingwu. Seeing Han Qingwu stopping her explanation, Tang Xiao immediately revealed a slight smile as he asked, What did he do? Let's not to talk about this topic anymore. Han Qingwu shook her head and continued, If anything, you must find a good excuse when asking him for leave. I can help you ask the other leaders in the department. However, as far as I know, the teachers and professors in our department have no rights to decide whether a new student can ask for a leave of absence during military training. Why? asked Tang Xiao in a puzzled expression, surprised. The current military training subject is different from the past. In particular, regular military training in university is very strict. Generally speaking, for students who are used to fake excuses for leave of absence, they must participate in the military training, unless they are really sick or not fit to participate. Tang Xiao was silenced for a moment, before he slowly said, I'll still try it. If I can get it then it would for the best, but if not, then I'll attend the military training. Okay. Han Xingwu nodded and then asked, then what are you gonna do next? Are you going back to the classroom? Or? Are we still going to have class today? asked Tang Xiao. For the time being, no. Han Qingwu shook her hand and replied. If so, then I'll go first. I'm going to the campus library to borrow some books. That's right. Is it possible for me to borrow books from the campus library now? It should be, said Han Qingwu with a smile. Tang Xiao then stood up as he beckoned and said, Then I'll go to the library. You can go busy yourself. Twenty minutes later, when Tang Xiao arrived at the library, he was rendered speechless. Shanghai University's library was very large, it was at least a dozen times larger than Star City First High School's. Just merely walking from the main classroom building to the library, it took him twenty minutes. Nevertheless, it was after he took the unnecessary long way and asked directions. At this time, a few students were going in and coming out of the library's entrance. The site itself was rather deserted compared to other places. When he went inside, he was immediately shocked upon seeing rows upon rows of bookshelves lined with books inside a spacious hall. Hi, I'm this year's freshman. I want to borrow a few books. Tang Xiao went to the work area where several staffs were located and spoke to one of the middle-aged women. I'm sorry, new students are not yet able to borrow books from the library, said the middle-aged woman with a smile, although you already have your university card, but you have yet to apply for a library card. If you plan to borrow books frequently, you need to submit your ID card as well as other information. Then we'll handle your library card application. Then I'll submit all the information you need now, said Tang Xiao with a smile after having been silent for a moment. All right. A few minutes later, Tang Xiao had submitted all the required information. He then walked into the library. Knowledge was like nourishment. The more knowledge one learned the more one could think and understand things out. Although in the truest sense one couldn't truly grasp geography by only knowing astronomy, yet, Having more knowledge in one's mind could make one's path in life be faster, easier, and steadier. It was 11 p.m. He left the library after reading a book and then found Lubai's office after asking around. Inside the office, Lubai was holding a magnifying glass to observe the lines of a stone. 
Upon hearing the door being knocked, he put down the magnifying glass and looked up. Tang Shou? Ah. Uh. Professor Lu, I'm disturbing you, am I? said Tang Shou with a smile. Lu Bai quickly came out of his desk. He let out a smile and then said, No, no. I'm glad you came looking for me. Tang Xiao, it's been two months since we last met, right? Yeah, nearly so, said Tang Xiao with a smile. Gesturing for Tang Xiao to sit down, Lu Bai then personally brewed a pot of tea and poured a cup for Tang Xiao. After that, he smiled and said, It's kind of fortunate that I met you in Tianjin City before. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known that a genius would be coming to our campus. Well, have you registered yet? Or is there anything you haven't completed? Tell me and I'll help you handle it immediately. Actually, my coming here this time is because I need Professor Li's help for two matters. Said Tang Xiao with a smile. So? Do tell me. As long as I can help, you can rest assured that I won't refuse laughed Le Bai happily upon hearing it. Professor Lu, I have some important things that need to be handled. Thus, I'm afraid I won't have time to attend the military training. Could you open a back door for me? Surprised, Lu Bai frowned and said, What do you have to do? I have to leave for Jingmen Island for a few days. I have some important matters to do there. I have a good solution for that. Lu Bai nodded and said, I have been researching a subject that requires me to explore and observe some island's terrains in the South China Sea. When the time comes, I'll put your name in the exploration member list, so you won't need to participate in the military training. I'll handle the formalities with the campus. So, what about the other matter? I heard that freshmen must stay in the campus. Can I get an exception for this? Of course, I'll also stay on the campus often, but... Lu Bai waved his hand and said, If you don't want to live inside the campus, you can apply to live outside. These are only trivial matters. Just give it to me to handle it. Tang Xiao said gratefully, Thanks a lot, Professor Lu. Anyway, do you have some free time at noon? I want to invite you to have lunch with me. Clapping his hands, Lu Bai replied with a contented expression, No problem. However, I should be the one treating you. After all, since you've come to me, I'm afraid that old geezer in Tianjin City would stab my spine if I not invited you to a meal. Anyways, let's go to the Tongfu restaurant outside the campus. I'm a regular there. Tang Xiao smiled faintly. Treating him for a meal. He was naturally unable to let Lebai treat him today. After all, he was the one asking for his help, to begin with. After lunch, Tang Xiao refused Lebai's invitation to drink tea. After parting ways, he went straight to the campus library again. After spending more than an hour reading a book there, he then went to the classroom. At this moment, the students present were obviously a lot more than in the morning. It was more than 30 students altogether, and there was only 10 left remaining for the full class. Tang Xiao's arrival, in particular, attracted everyone's attention, as many of them whispered about some topics Tang Xiao couldn't hear. Yo, brother Tang. Come here. Zhao Liang stood as he faced toward Tang Xiao and waved. Tang Xiao walked there and sat himself down. Only then he heard Zhao Liang's willy voice, eldest brother Tang, now our classmates have really seen it. Our class's teacher in charge, Teacher Han really came to Shanghai University just for you. When you left the classroom in the morning, it was just like her spirit had left her body. It wasn't long after meeting the other new freshmen that she went out to chase you. Tang Xiao creased his brows slightly as he shook his head and said, she might have had her own matters. All right. Let's change the topic. Who among you knows any fellow senior students here? Why do you? Yu Kai was puzzled. Our fellow senior students should be able to borrow books from the campus library. I was planning to borrow a few books there to read. If I can't borrow them, I want to know a place outside the campus where I can buy them, said Tang Xiao. 
Why borrow them? Might as well buy them directly. Tell me what books you want to buy. But it's best for you to make a list of them, though. I'll drive you out to buy them after we finished everything this afternoon. Said Yukai, with a smile. Well, let's buy it then. Laughed Tang Xiao and said, let's go out this afternoon and then stroll around after that. I'll treat you to dinner tonight. Yukai raised his thumb and exclaimed, praising, Woot, eldest brother Tang is really impressive. But where are we going to eat tonight? I just had lunch in Tongfu restaurant outside the campus this noon. Their dishes are not bad, said Tang Xiao. No problem. Yukai nodded and said, anyways, are your pockets full? If it is, let's call Zhao Liang and his dorm mates. The seven of us having a drink will surely create a good atmosphere. Tang Xiao nodded, that's fine with me. Call everyone. Yu Kai nodded contentedly, but he suddenly whispered, Have you heard something? The last guy in our dorm who has yet to arrive was injured by some hoodlums because of his heroic acts. He's hospitalized in Shanghai Hospital now. I heard his injuries are not severe. Nevertheless, it's impossible for him to come to school during this period. And heck, I'm really envious of him. He doesn't have to participate in the military training. Acting heroically and getting injured? What happened exactly? asked Tang Xiao, puzzled. This buddy came across some robbers. Precisely, he helped an old lady get her wallet back. But then he got stabbed by the hoodlum's knife. But man. He's quite strong-willed. For fear of delaying his registration to the campus, he pressed and covered his wound came out of the subway entrance and ran for a few kilometers to our campus. The teachers in the registrar office learned about the situation and reported it to the cops. Later on, they learned after the police investigation that he got stabbed by the hoodlums because of his heroic act. That's right, the children of that old lady also sent him a pennant flag. Our campus will surely become famous because of this. Said Yukai. A trace of smile was revealed on the corner of Tang Xiao's mouth as he nodded and said, It seems like we have more brothers in our dorms now. Well then, how about we go to the hospital to visit him? Some of us has discussed it too, and we're ready to go to the hospital in the afternoon. Zhao Liang's dorm brothers also want to go. Said Yu Kai. All right, then we shall go together, said Tang Xiao with a smile. At this time, Han Qingwu entered the classroom. As she looked around the classroom and saw Tang Xiao, a trace of a smile immediately appeared on her face as she said, The students who have just registered, come to me to fill your registration. I'm Han Qingwu and I'll be your class teacher in charge for the next few years. Immediately, more than 10 students who had just registered themselves went to Han Qingwu to write their names and phone numbers. Knock, knock. The classroom's door was knocked and everyone's eyes looked at the door's direction. However, after they saw the girl in front of the classroom, each and every one of them stared blankly in a daze one after another. A beauty. A strikingly gorgeous belle. She was a very beautiful belle, never before seen by almost all of the students in the class. You are? Han Qingwu was the fastest to react as she asked. I'm looking for Tang Xiao, said the gorgeous bell with a smile unfolding on her face. Chapter 342 Who are you exactly? In a flash, everyone's eyes, including Han Qingwu's, were fixated on Tang Xiao. Envy and jealousy filled their eyes, crying inside as to why such a striking beauty who could topple a country didn't look for them. Han Qingwu looked at Tang Xiao with slightly creased brows and asked, Do you know her? Yeah. Tang Xiao stood up slowly as a trace of smile appeared on his handsome face. As he walked toward the door, he said, Teacher Han, I'm going out. I'll be back shortly. Okay. Han Qingwu's expression looked a bit strange as she nodded silently. A moment after, Tang Xiao walked alongside the bell to the corridor and said with a smile, waning, I did hear you would come to Shanghai University to attend the graduate program, but I never thought you'd really come. 
seems like you're an alumnus here as well. Since I'm a graduate program student and you're a freshman, then shall I call you junior fellow student Tang? Said Mu Weining and lightly laughed. Tang Xiao couldn't help laughing, well, might as well call me by my name. Anyhow, is there something you need from me? Is it not all right for me to look for you? Said Mu Weining with a smile, anyhow. I heard from my teacher that you invited him for lunch outside this noon. Teacher? Lu Bai. I was asking for Professor Li's help. It was just time for lunch, so I asked him to have lunch together with me, said Tang Xiao with a smile. Yeah, I did hear teacher say it, Mu Weining nodded and then said, do you have time this evening? How about having dinner? I can't. I promised my classmates to treat them to a meal this evening. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, you can come too, or else we can mark for another day. Mu Weining hesitated for a moment before she shook her head and said, I won't go. I don't know your classmates. How about tomorrow evening? Let's meet at the campus gate. All right. Tang Xiao nodded. I was very worried that you were not someone easy to get along with. Said Mu Weining with a smile, but since I know from Tang Ying that you're her younger brother, I feel completely at ease. Tang Ying? You know her, asked Tang Xiao, puzzled. We're boudoir friends. Laughed Mu Weining as she said, we've been playing together since childhood. Ah, the world really is a very small place. Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, anyways, I gotta get back to the classroom. Let's exchange our numbers and meet again tomorrow evening. All right. After exchanging cell numbers, Mu Weining left with a smile on her face. As Tang Xiao returned to the classroom, everyone's vision was immediately attracted to him. Han Qingwu didn't say anything, but Yu Kai, Hu Qingsong, and the others immediately approached him when he sat himself back in his seat. Eldest brother Tang, my dear brother, who was that breathtakingly beautiful belle? With a voice filled with a northeast accent, Hu Qingsong hugged Tang Xiao's shoulder affectionately as he asked. Following that, Zhao Liang also hurriedly echoed, Yeah, you mustn't hide it, eldest brother Tang. That kind of stunning beauty is just a really, really drop-dead gorgeous. Man, I'd be content to have my lifespan lessened by ten years if I had such a breathtaking gorgeous bell as my girlfriend. Tang Xiao was at a loss whether he had to cry or laugh upon seeing them. He could only reply helplessly, nope, I'm not that familiar with her since we only had a meal together before. But back then, after she heard that I would study at Shanghai University, she then came visiting me to have some chats. Anyhow, if you really want to chase after her, I can help you build the bridge. Yukai rapidly echoed, then she's mine. You must not compete with me. Eldest brother Tang, can you give me her number? I'll treat you to a big meal tonight. I can't tell you her number that easily, mate. Tang Xiao couldn't help laughing and said, but I'll ask her tomorrow about it. Regardless, I'll give you her number if she's willing to know you. After all, it's her number, to begin with. Damn, it's just so right to call you eldest brother Tang. You really know how to respect a beautiful woman. At this time, Yukai showed a magnanimous verve as he raised his thumb and sighed, well, I got no problem with that, so I'll be waiting for the good news from you tomorrow. Since you're going to treat us tonight, I won't snatch the honor. But after filling our bellies, I want everyone to accompany me to the best KTV in Shanghai. <laughs> Eldest brother Tang, you mustn't favor one and leave out the others, no? Laughed Hu Qingsong as he said, you gotta give us her number too. Yeah, Zhao Liang nodded and said, a graceful young lady is a good match for a gentleman. All of us here have no girlfriend. So we'll pursue the lady together. Whoever can hug the bell will depends on each one's ability. Besides, even if we brothers don't act, I'm afraid countless cheap men on the campus will go signing up dauntlessly, wave upon wave. Yu Kai thought about it and he also thought that what Zhao Liang said was true. As far as men were concerned, a woman at such a level would always attract them. 
not to mention that there were a lot of men with courage nowadays, so it was inevitable that many flies would revolve around her. Okay. But we brothers gotta have an agreement first. Nobody can play shady here. If any one of us can really win the heart of the bell, all of us will have to give him our faithful blessing. No problem. Deal. Okay. The seven or eight guys around Tang Xiao echoed and nodded with satisfaction. Observing them, Tang Xiao was secretly speechless inside. He then noticed that Han Qingwu was paying attention to him. Pretending not having seen anything, he said in a low voice, Brothers, look. Teacher Han is kinda displeased seeing us gathered and talking here. Let's talk about how you'll chase the bell thingy after we leave the classroom, shall we? Got it. Everyone looked at Han Qingwu. They could see that her expression was kind of unsightly as they then immediately sat straight. Yu Kai then raised his hand to cover his mouth as he spoke, eldest brother Tang, it's really a pity, though. You already have such a striking beauty in teacher Han. So you mustn't compete with us for that bell. But worry not, though, for us brothers will compensate you for that. Hu Qingsong will surely wash your socks for the next several months. Hu Qingsong who could hear Yu Kai's words, albeit vaguely, quickly lowered his head and growled, screw off, Yu Kai. Why don't you wash eldest brother Tang's socks for months, huh? But I'm the one who's gonna treat him to a meal. I can also do that. Tang Xiao, who sat between them and listened to their whispered quarrel, immediately extended his hand to twist their waists. He looked at their faces and spoke in an undertone voice, if you two keep bickering, I won't give you the number. There were only a few things to do left in the afternoon class, one of which was the election of the interim class president. What made Tang Xiao unable to utter any words was that he was unanimously voted and elected as the class president, despite his unwillingness to participate in the election. Following that, a female student was then appointed as the class vice president. Quickly, the other student body class's members were also elected, although it was only temporary. Afterward, Han Qingwu took everyone to get their books and dismissed the class after everyone obtained their textbooks. Tang Xiao, you stay. Han Qingwu cried out to stop Tang Xiao, who was about to leave. Yu Kai, who stood beside Tang Xiao, quickly pulled out his BMW car keys and threw it to Tang Xiao. He then winked at him and called out, Eldest brother Tang, drive my car when you go out to our appointment. If you don't come back tonight, I'll host the dinner. Also, I won't lock the door for you. Get lost. Tang Xiao grabbed the key and threw a curse back to him. Not only that, Yu Kai and the gang also helped him take his textbooks back to their dormitory. Angry and amused at the same time, Han Qingwu stared at Yu Kai. She had been in college before, so she naturally knew what Yu Kai meant. Talk any rubbish again and I'll make you fail in your English course. Brothers, withdraw. Upon hearing it, Yu Kai ran like hell at once. Walking down the boulevard in the campus, Han Qingwu kept silent, and Tang Xiao also wasn't anxious to speak. The two walked without destination as Han Qingwu eventually turned her head to look at Tang Xiao, asking, who was the bell that came looking for you before? I thought you couldn't bear to hold any longer. Said Tang Xiao with a smile, she's Professor Li's student who's attending the graduate program at Shanghai University this year. I met her in Tianjin City when I got to know Professor Lu. Realization dawned upon Han Qingwu as she immediately smiled and said, Little did I think that you would have such an edge on beautiful women. I recall that. When we were in Star City, there was also a gorgeous woman who came looking for you, right? How come I have an edge with women? I've always been busy with many things that need to be dealt with, tiring me out to death. Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, Besides, I don't intend to fall in love for the time being. I even got depressed every time Yu Kai teases me. Surprised, Han Qingwu stared at him blankly and said in astonishment, why don't you want to fall in love? Isn't being in the university the best time to fall in love? I'm very busy and I also have to allocate much time for study. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, 
love between a man and woman doesn't have any meaning to me. Why do I taste the vicissitudes of life hearing from you? Han Xingwu was at a loss whether she had to cry or laugh. You couldn't be a hundred-year-old geezer or someone who transmigrated and reincarnated into a new body, right? Tang Xiao smiled and replied, what's with transmigration and reincarnation? Suddenly, his body quivered in an instant as his facial expression changed as though having a thunderbolt blasted inside his heart. Transmigrating and being reincarnated? Realization dawned on him all of a sudden. If Shui Qingcheng were to die in the immortal world, could she possibly be transmigrated and reincarnated on Earth? It had to be known that the immortal world was only one of the myriad realms. Whereas the abyssal hell of samsara was the place that governed the cycle of samsara. For individuals who died in the immortal world, as long as their souls didn't scatter and disappear, it was possible for them to be reincarnated in the immortal world or in one of the myriad small worlds. And Earth was also one of those myriad small worlds. Tang Xiao, what happened to you? Han Qingwu could acutely sense Tang Xiao's unusual reaction as she asked. After falling into silence for a while, Tang Xiao suddenly asked, Do you have three red birthmarks on your left shoulder? Stunned, Han Qingwu fell into a daze. With disbelief and astonishment, she asked, How did you know? Even when the weather is hot, I have never once showed my shoulders, no? You really have them? Tang Xiao's pupils shrunk. Yeah, it's been there since I was born. There are three small red birthmarks shaped in triangular patterns. Said Han Xingwu, my parents once told when I was a child that these three birthmarks look like a very beautiful pattern, so I don't need any tattoos. Tang Xiao's face turned somewhat pale. He stared at Han Qingwu tightly as he asked word by word, Who? Are. You. Exactly? Shocked and stupefied, Han Qingwu's pace came to a stop in an instant. With a bewildered expression, she asked, Why are you asking this? I'm me. Chapter 343 Utterly Confused and Bewildered While looking at Han Qingwu's bewildered expression, Tang Xiao's heart was completely chaotic at this moment. He was sure that she should be Shui Qingcheng, albeit vaguely. Yet, there was something he was unable to figure out. How would Shui Qingcheng have an accident not long after his tragic death in the immortal world? Logically speaking, they must have snatched his interspatial ring and obtained massive treasures from inside. He himself had even given them the heavenly art of cosmic genesis cultivation technique. Shouldn't they be celebrating their victory and immersing themselves in practicing it? What the hell had happened in the immortal world in the end? Why did Shui Qingcheng transmigrate and reincarnate here? What happened to you, Tang Xiao? Han Qingwu grabbed Tang Xiao's hand with an expression full of concern. Tang Xiao took a deep breath and temporarily suppressed his chaotic feelings. He shook off Han Qingwu's hand as he shook his head and said, Teacher Han, I just recalled that I still have some things to do. If you don't have anything else to say, I can no longer accompany you chatting. So I'll take my leave. Hey. Hey. Ignoring Han Qingwu's shouts, Tang Xiao strode toward the campus gate. He needed to calm himself. He dared not say with 100% assurance that Han Qingwu was Shui Qingcheng yet they were way too much alike. Be it their appearances, words, actions, demeanors, and also the same three red birthmarks on their left shoulders. Shui Qingcheng had once told him that her three birthmarks would forever accompany her regardless of herself, being reincarnated anywhere. And now, he didn't know how he should face her. Should I kill her? However, looking at her bewildered expression just now, Tang Xiao didn't have the heart to do it. Should I get her back? Yet, recalling his death in the immortal world, his heart was torn by a tearing pain. How could it be possible to get together with her again? How could it be possible to love and have affection for her again? He was at a loss. With such a chaotic mood, Tang Xiao returned to Blue Star Villa Complex. He took a bath, put on pajamas, and sat on the bed. 
Right now, he needed to calm himself. After a very long period of time, he gradually calmed down, albeit slowly. He already made up his mind. If Han Qingwu was really Shui Qingcheng, he would definitely kill her personally. However, before he was 100% sure, what he needed to do was distance himself from her. I gotta vent this feeling. Tang Xiao dressed up and then dialed Yu Kai's cell number. Where are you? In the dormitory. We're about to go to the hospital. I'll be waiting for you at the campus gate. Hurry up. We'll go to the hospital together. Said Tang Xiao. Yu Kai fussed, aren't you dating teacher Han? How? Don't shit about me dating Han Qingwu anymore. I really don't have anything to do with her. If you say any shit again, I won't give you the bell's number. Said Tang Xiao. No, no. I promise you I won't say anything. Wait for us there, said Yu Kai as he then hung up the phone. Tang Xiao went out of his villa. He took a glance at the garage door and was somewhat at a loss inside. He didn't want to be too high profile, but the four cars in the garage really made it inconvenient for him to take them out, especially to see his classmates. Thinking about it, should he buy a cheap car? Ten minutes later, Tang Xiao arrived at the campus gate. Yu Kai hadn't come out yet, so he went to a small supermarket nearby to buy a pack of cigarettes. He took one, lit it up, and pulled a few puffs. Huh? Tang Xiao creased his brows. Someone he didn't want to see was caught in his line of sight, along with a bunch of hoodlums around him. This damn bunch of second-generation nouveau riches. Can't you live normally once? Living and spending your youth in stupid idly life like you were drunk all day, really meaningless. Tang Xiao looked at them from afar, watching them standing beside supercars as he shook his head secretly. Two minutes later, a BMW came out of the campus. When it stopped at the corner of the campus gate, Yu Kai, Hu Qingsong, Zhao Liang and some others got off the car. Woot, isn't this the famous young master you? TSK, TSK. It's so unlike you to be admitted to Shanghai University, huh? Especially, this taste of yours. Seems like you're getting trashier, you're even hanging out with a bunch of hillbillies now. With a cigarette clamped in his lips, Li Jin leaned on his supercar while shouting aloud with squinted eyes at Yu Kai, who was a few meters away from him. <laughs> He's really hopeless. Had it not been because Yu Yen covered his ass before, could he even be able to enter the count? Another yellow dyed haired youth loudly echoed, full of sarcasm. As Yu Kai saw Li Jin's gang, his expression immediately changed. Anger was written on his handsome face as he shouted back, Li Xin, Qin Yusheng. You wanna have a fucking brawl here, don't you? Rolling his eyes in response, Li Xin taunted, What if this big daddy wants to have a brawl, huh? You wanna play with us? Hu Qingsong strode out and looked at Li Xin and his gang, saying, You wanna brawl, we'll accompany you. This big daddy has never been afraid of anyone other than my own old man. Li Jin's complexion changed and waved his hands. Following him, several people walked toward Yu Kai and Hu Ching Song. Standing in the distance, Tang Xiao watched them. A helpless expression emerged on his face. The reason why he made a bet with Li Zhang before was not entirely because Li Xin was a sore in his eyes. The main reason was that he would have to get along with Yu Kai in the future. Hence, he hoped that Li Jin would be far away from him. Thus, he got rid of him to solve the problem beforehand, as to avoid a conflict between these two. Yet, now, they unexpectedly ran into each other at entrance of Shanghai University. While stuffing one of his hands in his trousers pocket and the other holding a cigarette, Tang Xiao walked toward the two gangs. When he was ten meters away from them, he dashed and traversed four or five meters forward in an instant bugger off. Tang Xiao glared at Li Xian and indifferently said. Upon seeing Tang Xiao, Li Xian's complexion abruptly changed. Next to him was a young man who had never seen Tang Xiao, who then rolled up his sleeve and cussed, who the fuck are you jumping in here? 
why don't you mind your own fucking business? You wanna get trashed? Pa. Tang Xiao didn't stop his pace as he strode before that youth and fiercely slapped him. The slap was fast and also exerted a bit of strength, causing the youth to be thrown four or five meters away before heavily slamming on the ground and fainting. Are you not going to get the fucking lost? Tang Xiao glared at Li Xian again. Li Xian and the seven or eight youths around him had their facial expressions turn unsightly. However, they didn't make impertinent remarks like the beaten youth and just angrily glared at Tang Xiao. Let's get the hell out of here. Gritting his teeth, Li Xian quickly walked to the fainted youth's side. After he pulled him up from the ground, he then gave the youth to his gang and left. What the heck is this? Yu Kai was dumbfounded. Hu Qingsong was stunned, whereas Zhao Liang and the others were left dumbstruck. The gang that was about to clash with them unexpectedly looked walked away with their tails between their legs. What was that, we'll get the hell out, for? Turning his head to look at Tang Xiao, Yu Kai asked with difficulty, eldest brother Tang, what the heck just happened? That son of bitch Li Zhen, seemed afraid of you? Zhao Liang nodded and echoed. Yeah, how come he was like a mouse bumping into a cat when he saw you? Never mind it. Tang Xiao let out a pale smile and said, maybe I look scarier or something. Or maybe it was because there was another person coming to aid you, so they could only leave with their tails between their legs. No way. Eldest brother Tang, we are brothers who sleep next to you, so don't try hiding it from us, Yu Kai shook his head and said. I grew up knowing Li Zhan and his gang. This bunch of bastards are not pushovers. Even if someone helped us, they wouldn't be afraid like that. Besides, apart from that kiddo who was hit by you, it was not only Li Zhen who was afraid of you, so were his other gangs. Okay, okay. Tang Xiao forced a smile and said, I was idle and got bored last night, so I went to Laoshan in Changxi City. I bet a wager with him before the race. That was, he must immediately avoid me like the plague were he to see me later. He lost, so he just straightly left. That's it. You mean, you competed with him in a car race in Laoshan Highway, and won, asked Yu Kai, astounded. You can say it was my win. But I was not the champion, though. Tang Xiao nodded and said, I only got the runner-up. Yu Kai's lips quivered before he suddenly said, Eldest brother Tang, you really lie low. I only got know this now. You should be very. Raising his hand to interrupt him, Tang Xiao then said, well, I'm very capable. For you to worship me is normal. Anyways, let's go to the hospital. Also, your car won't be able to take all of us. Yu Kai's mouth opened a few times, wanting to say something, yet he gulped the words back. He was not a brainless person, otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to enter Shanghai University. From Tang Xiao's reaction, he could infer that Tang Xiao didn't want him to speak out the following words. All right, I'll ride a cab with eldest brother Tang. If you arrive at the hospital before us, remember to wait for us at the gate, said Hu Ching Song. All right. After a slight hesitation, Yu Kai nodded. As the BMW left, Hu Ching Song turned his head to Tang Xiao and said with a smile, eldest brother Tang, I know that Yu Kai wanted to say that you were also very rich, right? I was indeed unable to see that you just kept yourself under the radar. It turns out that you're a second-generation nouveau riche as well. Tang Xiao couldn't help chuckle to himself, I'm wealthy? I always thought that having money from your family is not as interesting as making money yourself. Hence, apart from the money my family gave me, the rest of the money I spent was earned by myself. You earned it? How? asked Hu Qingsong, astounded. Setting up my own enterprise, selling calligraphies and paintings, and also working as a doctor. Shortly put, I do what I can to make money. Laughed Tang Xiao. Hu Ching Song rolled his eyes. He was simply unable to believe everything Tang Xiao said from the start. He just smiled and cussed, eldest brother, I just realized that your big talk is the most powerful amongst us. <laughs> 
Don't you think that bragging is also a good skill in itself? Laughed Tang Xiao and said, There's a good saying for that, having good intentions is not as good as having a silver tongue. You two know that a silver tongue people is very popular nowadays, no? What an absurd fallacy. Hu Qingsong said, Those whose mouths are hyping about something are people who are usually up to no good. That's not a good thing at all. <laughs> not wanting to talk about this topic anymore, Hu Qingsong then said, Let's go. Let's not have you Kai and the others wait for us for too long. They quickly caught a cab and rushed towards Shanghai Hospital. Chapter 344, Giving a Bit of Advice Shanghai Dynasty Clubhouse An expensive supercar roared as it entered the clubhouse entrance and then stopped in the parking lot. Following that, several security guards hurriedly opened the car's doors. Get you G inside. Li Xin got off and said with a cold and detached expression. Li Xin's gang quickly entered the main hall. They then took the elevator straight to the third floor to a magnificently decorated and spacious lounge. The several security guards who followed them then put the fainted youth on the sofa before leaving one after another. Fuck. He's too rampant. Too arrogant. Brother Xin, I can't stomach this insult. A young man dressed in outlandish clothes cried out angrily. Li Zheng coldly stared at him and then asked, You can't stomach this insult, but do you think we can? The fucking damned thing is that we can't. And we have no means to retaliate. That youth's brows creased and indignantly replied, Why can't we? Does that punk have some underlings with real abilities or something? Yu Zhi was beaten by him and hasn't woken until now. I'm afraid he got a brain concussion. While looking at Yu Zhi who was lying down on the sofa in front of him, Li Xin lit up a cigarette and sat on the sofa in silence. If he not met Tang Xiao in Chongqi City beforehand and competed with him in the race, he would have retaliated without hesitation. However, he absolutely couldn't dare to do that right now. Brother Jin, you actually say that. Are we really unable to break off from the bet that time and must avoid him at all costs? From when we were still kids until now, since when anyone who dares to shit on our head ends up well? That youth furiously cried. Taking out a deep breath, Li Xin forced a smile and said, Do you think I don't want to trash that punk? But if we do exact our revenge and fail and then he figures out it was us, I'm afraid that we will be dead meat. The youth was stunned. He then asked with a confused expression, What do you mean? Like the saying goes, Know thy enemy and know yourself, only then will you be victorious in battle. Li Xian replied in a heavy voice, Let me ask you, do we know this surname Tang's background? Were we to provoke a terrifying figure rashly, only bad luck will be waiting for us. Besides, there's another thing I didn't tell you. Last night in the car race, Qi Nan almost had Huan Yu killed. If not for Tang Xiao, Huan Yu would be dead. The youth was confused, I did hear Huan Yu mentioning this after the car race yesterday. Turns out this is for real? Yes, it's real. Li Xin nodded and said, I saw the accident site. I also took a look at Huan Yu's car. It was indeed like what he said. If not for Tang Xiao, he would have died in Qi Nan's hands back then. This explains that Qi Nan is a vicious and merciless woman who sees lives as worthless things. Yet, she's unexpectedly very reverent and respectful toward Tang Xiao. From this, can't you figure out the crux of the problem? Brother Xin, you mean that Tang Xiao has a terrifying identity and background? The youth was shocked. The Everlasting Feast Hall is an upscale restaurant in Shanghai so I can tell that the big boss behind it is perhaps very extraordinary. Li Xin sneered and said, I suspect that Tang Xiao and this everlasting feast hall have a deep relationship. Thus, if you want to deal with him, you gotta thoroughly investigate him first. Otherwise, you will highly likely be out of luck were you to act rashly. In an instant, the other five or six people fell into silence. If Li Xin's analysis was correct, then they really couldn't act against Tang Xiao that easily. After all, 
Someone who could make Chi Nan keep acting respectfully toward him was evident that the person possessed an extraordinary background. In the case that they provoked him, the other party would send someone to kill them. Just wait until he wakes up and we'll talk about it again. Li Zhen sighed inside, feeling slightly vexed. He then grabbed the beer on the table, opened it and gulped it down without reservation. At Shanghai First Public Hospital. Tang Xiao and Hu Qingsong got down from the taxi. There, Yu Kai and several others were already waiting for them at the entrance. The group of six then bought a basket of fruits in the vicinity and then rushed to the hospital's inpatient department's ward Yu Kai, had asked around. Inpatient department, ward number 608. Shui Chao leaned on the bedhead, feeling all bored while rotating the mobile phone in his hand. However, he didn't even glance at it. After coming out from a backwoods region, he originally intended to go around the metropolis and see the world, as well as learn some useful things. Yet he didn't expect that he would get injured right on his first day in Shanghai. Damn. I was way too careless. Those little bastards only knew trivial kung fu, yet I got stabbed by their knives. If that old man of mine were to know about this, he would have jumped out of his grave out of fury to beat me violently, no? Holy fucking shit. I must never mention anything about this shit. Otherwise, my precious son will surely be laughing at me, his father in the future. Shui Chao yawned and became more and more listless. However, saving others also gave him some benefits. Recalling the promise from the campus that he was exempted from tuition fee, a smile was revealed on his face. He didn't much money at home. He did leave a big sum of money money there, but it was only sufficient for his son's milk money. I gotta make money. I have to. That old man of mine didn't have any skills. So I won't let my son think the same in the future, that his father also has no skills. So be it. I'll take any work when I'm not busy with my studies. Carrying bricks, moving cement, I, this father, have done it for some time. So it won't be a problem. I walked in the mountain back at home since I was a small child and I'm the son of a hunter, so it will definitely not be a problem. Amid his thoughts, he glanced at the sick bed next to him. A young man about his age, looking refined with his delicate, fair skin and wearing glasses, was surrounded by his parents and grandparents. Even his aunt stayed there for a couple of hours. Suddenly, he was somewhat envious of that pampered kid. The kiddo merely broke his leg after falling accidentally. Just because of that, his entire family ran over here to ask how he was? Ah, I'm so damn bored. Sorrowfully screaming and crying deep down inside, he then turned his head to look out of the window. Who here is named Shui Chao? A loud voice with a thick northeast accent came from the ward door. For a moment, Shui Chao stared blankly, surprised. As he saw a group of young men about his age coming into the ward, his complexion abruptly changed. His hand instantly grabbed the steel nail hidden under the pillow. Don't tell me these punks are the comrades of those criminals and came to the hospital to retaliate against me? He whispered to himself inside as a cold light instantly flashed in his eyes. It's me. Hu Qingsong strode forward. When he looked at the grim-looking Shui Chao as well as saw the particularly obvious lump of muscles all over his body, he immediately cried out, Wow, so you're Shui Chao, eh? Not bad, not bad. Though you don't look as handsome as me, your physique is quite great. Well, I gotta introduce myself. I'm Hu Qingsong, you can call me Old Hu, Qingsong, or of course, you can call me Brother Hu as well. Shui Chao's gaze shifted from Hu Qingsong when he saw someone behind him carrying a basket of fruits. The restlessness inside his heart relaxed a lot as he then asked, Pardon me, who are you? Surprised for a moment, Hu Qingsong suddenly realized that he had just spouted many nonsensical things. With an embarrassed expression on his face, he said, We're students from Shanghai University. This is Yu Kai and he's Tang Xiao, the three of us are dorm mates. That one is Zhao Liang, Yang Hu, and Sun Xiaoquan. 
Their dorm is right in front of ours. Ah, that's right. We're all your classmates. Fellow students? Observing and sizing them up, Shui Chao then extended his hand with the steel nail under the quilt and said with a smile, Great fellow students. I never expected that all of you would actually come to see me here. Yu Kai sat next to the bedside and said with a smile, Well, you're a big hero in our eyes. Ever since we heard about your glorious and honorable deeds, we decided to visit you. Anyways, we'll become comrades for the next four years. Echoing him, Hu Qingsong also followed, that's right. Once fellow students, brothers for life. We're not only fellow students, but we'll also stay together later. So to say, the relationship is doubled. But it's a pity that I'm not a woman, though. Otherwise, I'd let you brother have some straightforward pleasure. Cough, cough. Xue Chao was choked by a mouthful of his own saliva as he looked at Yu Kai and Hu Qingsong with a weird expression. Inwardly, he secretly lamented, what kind of ghosts are these fellow students of mine? Tang Xiao walked a few steps toward Xue Chao and said, how can you be here by yourself? Is there no one looking after you? Waving his hand, Xue Chao replied, I came to university by myself, how would I have someone to look after me? It's just a small wound, so I'll be discharged after two days. Besides, I gotta get back to the campus. I'll contact the nurse in the hospital later so they will take care of your food well. We'll be coming often to visit you here since we got nothing to do for this period of time. If you have anything you want, don't hesitate to tell us. Said Tang Xiao. After staring in a daze at Tang Xiao for a long while, only then did Xue Chao shake his head and said, No need. It's all right, my injury is nothing to be concerned of. You don't need to waste your money. It's not easy to make money nowadays. You don't need to worry about it. You just need to recuperate from your injury. If you have any problems, let us know immediately. And don't refuse it. If you do, that means you regard us as strangers. Said Tang Xiao with a smile. This. After a slight hesitation, Xue Chao eventually nodded. Xue Chao, I heard you knock down three criminals by yourself? Have you practiced any martial arts before? asked Yu Kai. No. It's just that my family lives on a mountain. My family has been hunters for generations. Although I've never practiced any martial arts since I was small, I'm a mountain's monkey, nevertheless. If it were not for me spending my time desperately studying in the past few years, let alone three criminals, even if three more were added to them, I could still kill them. Hunter's family? Yukai's eyes brightened up as he exclaimed in admiration, holy cow. That's amazing. I heard that hunters are very strong. I never thought I would finally witness it today. So to say, our gang totally consists of powerhouses. When Old Hu had just arrived at the campus to register, he became the hero who saved the bell by beating several small scoundrels. As a result, those little hoodlums retaliated against him, whereas eldest brother Tang then used his invincible might to scare the shit out of them. And with you added to the gang, our dormitory, more or less, has four heavenly guardians now. Four heavenly guardians? Tang Xiao took a step back and flung his face aside. Expressing that he didn't know him. With a contemptuous look, Hu Qingsong spoke to Yu Kai, Hey, old Yu, don't speak shit so carelessly. For great heavenly kings? It's okay, for us three to stand up and clean up a few small thugs and hoodlums. But with that face of yours that looks even more beautiful than women, I'm afraid that you will be just like all show and no go, right? Hmph, what heavenly king, eh? I think you'd better be called as the imperial concubine. Hey, you wanna fight with me? roared Yukai angrily. Chapter 345 Emergency Situation Shanghai Dynasty Clubhouse Inside the resplendent and magnificent lounge on the third floor, Li Shen and his gang drank and chatted while a group of beautiful girls surrounded them, as if they had completely forgotten the previous humiliation. 
In the sofa at the corner, Yuji regained consciousness as an unbearable headache struck him. He had to use his arms to support himself for a while before slowly changing to a sitting position. A wave of anger burst inside his heart when he caught sight of his brothers, all fine and drinking. This is so wrong. These bastards are not my brothers. I got beaten up and they neglected me. But they got so far as having a party? Motherfuckers, you're all heartless shits. Clenching his fist, Yuji didn't flare up. He stood still and then went toward the door step by step. Huh? Yuji woke up. Accidentally seeing Yuji standing up, one of the youths immediately cried out. Li Jin raised his head. As he saw the scowling expression on Yuji's face, he quickly released the girl in his embrace. He then stood and blocked Yuji's path, asking with a puzzled expression, Hey, Yuji, where are you going? Yuji stopped walking. His eyes swept over Li Jun with a cold and detached expression and asked indifferently, I'm sure I got fucking beaten up. Tell me, what happened afterward? Li Jun's complexion turned stiff. He turned around to look at the others, waved his hand and said, Women, all of you out. After a short while, all the women left, leaving only Li Shan and his gang. Yu Ji, this punk, the one that beat you has quite a background. Do you remember me saying that I lost a bet with someone in the car race in Changxi City? The person who defeated me was that punk. I gave him my word that I'd stay the hell away from him when I see him. So, Li Shan forced a bitter smile and didn't finish his words. Squinting his eyes in response, Yuji indifferently said, In other words, you remained faithful to your brother thus you brought me back. Regardless, you avoided him like a plague and ran with your tail between your legs, am I right? This? Li Zhan and the others exchanged dismayed looks. They wore awkward and embarrassed expressions on their faces. Forget it. Let's not raise this shit for now. You continue playing, I'm leaving. I still got something to do. Said Yu Ji. Having said that, he bypassed Li Jin and walked out. With a slightly unsightly expression, Li Jin watched Yu Ji's disappearing back. He suddenly had a hunch that he just lost a brother yet again. It was just like in the past. Those goddamn traitors who became Yu Yang's underlings and cut off any relations with them. His expression fluctuated. Jolted by his thoughts, he turned around shouting, Go. Bring him back to me. The several youths glanced at each other before immediately chasing after Yu Ji. Quickly, Yu Ji was dragged back to the lounge. Yu Ji, we are brothers. Don't pretend to be stupid. I know that punk beat you, and we naturally won't leave it like that. But before we act, we must investigate his background and identity. Only after we know our enemy's capital can we work out a revenge plan. Li Jin clamped a cigarette and spoke seriously. Staring at Li Jun with a cold and detached expression, Yu Ji indifferently said, My head hurts. Staying here doesn't feel good for me. Since you don't want to send me to the hospital, then I'll go myself. Can I? Li Zhan and the others instantly realized his meaning. Their complexion turned unsightly. When all was said and done, they truly didn't thought to send Yu Ji to the hospital before. This negligence is our fault. Accept this glass of wine as an apology on behalf of our brotherhood. Li Zhan forced a wry smile and said. Yu Ji took the glass of booze, yet wasn't in a hurry to drink it. Rather, he calmly said, Li Jin, I now finally understand why Huan Zi betrayed us back then. I don't want to say it too clearly, for it won't look good for us. I'll drink this glass of wine and then go to the hospital to check my injury. You can continue playing here. Having said that, he drank the booze, put the glass down and turned around to leave. This time, Li Jin didn't stop him. The unsightliness on his face turned to the extreme. He sat back on the sofa and fell into silence, slowly closing his eyes. He was never a brainless man. He knew perfectly well what Yu Ji was implying with his words. 
Although Yu Zhi didn't say it straightforwardly, yet it was highly likely that he would no longer hang out with them. Fuck. The instant lesion opened his eyes, he grabbed the glass in front of him and fiercely threw it on the floor. The other youths exchanged looks in dismay, but no one said anything. Taking a deep breath and pacifying himself for a while, Li Xin then said in a heavy voice, rain must fall down from the sky, while women will also have to marry someday. So let's just live with it. You all have seen Yu Ji's actions recently. This guy is usually very crazy and never eats any losses. Were he to go after that surname Tang, just observe it quietly. I have no means to test out the weight this surname Tang possesses. Since he's going to test the waters for us, we'll just wait and see. This. The others felt cold inside as they quickly glanced at each other and didn't utter any words. Shanghai First Public Hospital. At the inpatient department downstairs, Tang Xiao, Yu Kai, and the others bade Shui Chao farewell and were about to head home. Thought it was, but only a short meeting, Shui Chao gave them a good impression. Let's not go back to campus first. Accompany me to buy a car. Zhao Liang was very envious of Yu Kai's car. Though he couldn't afford such an expensive car, but a car priced at 10,000 yuan was not a problem for him. Okay. We'll go together. Besides, we don't have anything to do in the afternoon. Laughed Yu Kai. You guys go. I still have things to do. If anything, I'll call you all tonight. I'll treat you to dinner. Said Tang Xiao. Eldest brother Tang, what are you gonna do? Asked Yu Kai, puzzled. It's just a trivial private matter, said Tang Xiao. Upon hearing it, Yu Kai silently nodded. Since Tang Xiao said it was a private matter, he didn't want to pry. As the gang quickly left, Tang Xiao heaved a sigh inside. He was having a headache as for how to clear the issues with Han Qingwu. He now regretted his promise to house her earlier. That woman was someone he wanted to keep his distance with. Even if she would become his teacher in charge for the next four years and he couldn't really avoid her, but still, he must reduce any chance of being together with her as far as he could. Since I've promised her, I'll just let her live there. Besides, I don't care about a house anyway, Tang Xiao sighed inwardly and then walked toward the outside. In front of the emergency room. A few ambulances arrived sounding their loud ear-piercing sirens and entered the hospital gate. Dozens of doctors and nurses that were waiting in front of the emergency room quickly pushed out trolleys and quickly surrounded them. Accident? Tang Xiao creased his brows as he saw the ambulance's doors being opened. Following that, the doctors and nurses lifted injured people with blood covering their bodies from the inside, as they then put them on the trolleys. Call Dr. Pan quickly. Damn, there are too many victims. The number of doctors and operating rooms in our hospital is far from enough. Call the other nearby hospitals and immediately transfer the wounded. Also, notify the ambulances behind and tell them to take the victims to the other nearby hospitals directly. Shouted a middle-aged man in a white coat and gold-rimmed glasses after he saw more than 20 severely injured people carried out from the seven ambulances. Tang Xiao's expression slightly changed. From that doctor, he could deduce a few issues. Firstly, there were too many victims and more would follow. Secondly, the hospital didn't have enough doctors and operating rooms. Thirdly, the victims must be transferred. Hence, it would delay their treatment, which may result in the death of the seriously wounded victims. While sighing inwardly, Tang Xiao strode toward the chaotic scene. Were he still as supreme in the immortal world, he wouldn't have bothered himself with such small and trivial matters. But the present him was not yet in the immortal path. He was but only a living person true to life. Hence, ignoring and disregarding the matter at present was not something he could do. Had he not encountered this matter and only heard about it elsewhere, he might have ignored it. But since it happened right before him and he could help, he wouldn't sit idly by and do nothing. Stop. Tang Xiao stopped a trolley. On the trolley was a badly wounded man. 
His right leg was bleeding and, although the wound had been bandaged, it was obvious that it couldn't stop the blood from flowing out. The blood had thoroughly dyed the bandage and the overflow filled the trolley's surface at this time. There was also blood on the hair ends on his head while his face was torn and bleeding. Reason being that a thin, thumb-sized steel bar had pierced his chest. What are you doing? Make way, quickly. The doctor beside the trolley scowled. Tang Xiao casually held the victim's wrist as he pressed his finger to check his pulse while replying in a deep voice, I'm also a doctor. Since your hospital doesn't have enough doctors and operating rooms, I'll give him treatment first. The middle-aged doctor was stunned for a moment before angrily scowling, You're a doctor? How come I haven't seen you in the hospital before? This patient is badly injured and needs to be promptly sent to the operating room. Don't delay the treatment and step aside. Tang Xiao didn't answer. He used his spiritual sense to cover the wounded and pushed the middle-aged doctor aside to examine the injuries on the victim's body. Rip. Tang Xiao ripped the wounded man's tattered clothes as his fingers quickly sealed several acupoints around the steel bar. After that, he tore his thigh's pants and sealed its blood vessels to stop the bleeding. Then, he held the wounded man's body and reached out for the steel bar that pierced his chest 10 centimeters deep. W what are you gonna do? Why you, you? Murder. Upon seeing Tang Xiao's actions, the middle-aged doctor immediately roared, while two nurses, as well as other staff, were also dulled. Ignoring him, Tang Xiao pulled the steel bar out. He then inserted his finger into the bloody hole and released his star force. After washing out the broken pieces of the bones inside and leaving a trace of his star force inside, he then turned to one of the nurses and shouted, Dress up his wound. Having said that, he reached out to the wounded man's head. He started with pressing the Dang Yang point and continuing with the Tai Yang, Yang Bai, Si Bai, Tian Chuang, and Lian Quan points. Along with black blood gushing out from the wound, Tang Xiao's fingers pressed the Lian Quan point several times before striding toward the other victims. What are you doing? Get the hell out. Another doctor at the side furiously looked at Tang Xiao, who had blocked his path. Saving people was like fighting fire. Thus, he was furious toward this young man who was delaying his treatment. The victim was at their dying point. If it were to be delayed any further, they may die at any time.